We can see Sean Crichton just get out of the rear passenger seat. Quite clearly the two of them there stood in their uh, winter jackets, winter hats, flat caps. You can uh, also see that uh, there are people in summer clothing and what struck us was the fact that the clothing that Crichton was wearing seemed very out of place for uh, the, the, the 12th of August. This revealing CCTV footage placed Crichton and the other two members of the gang acting suspiciously in a green rover near the vicinity of the murder. We clearly had images of the registration number which married up with the burnt out green rover so it started to come together and I believed at that point clearly we were in the right direction and that it was appropriate at that point to make arrests and gather whatever other evidence we could get. Three men have been arrested over the murder of Jerry Tobin, the Hells Angel biker shot dead on the M40. Armed police carried out early morning raids on three homes Armed in the officers Midlands. arrested three men in connection with the murder of Jerry Tobin. Jerry. The men have been taken to a police station made the arrests station after raiding three properties in Coventry and Nuneaton. The biker was shot while riding his bike as he was travelling on the M40 ten days ago. On Saturday, the 22nd of August, just 10 days after Jerry's murder, Sean Crichton, Simon Turner and Dane Garside were in custody, helping the police with their inquiries. Then I could have drawn the line under that and said, well, we've, you know, the case is done. But I, I felt quite strongly that actually others were probably involved in this. The four remaining members of the gang were under the scrutiny of the law. The undercover police had identified them through the surveillance footage they'd gathered on Crichton. They knew names. Now they started checking their movements on the days surrounding Jerry's murder. We uncovered images of them on the motorway services at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. The white Range Rover had three members of the gang in it, and that was stationed at Junction uh, 11 at Banbury. Uh, the blue Renault, we had sightings and uh, other, other detail of its movements between those two points, between Junction 11 and between Junction 15. This evidence would show Carl Garside, Dean Taylor, Ian Cameron and Malcolm Bull in prominent positions staked out along the M40, casting a deadly net to trap a Hells Angel. They'd been planning the murder for many months, staked out the route and organised their disguises but they then made the simplest of errors. They'd used their own cars, which could be clearly seen on CCTV, which led to the one thing they hadn't planned on, getting caught. I think they, they felt that they'd done enough to remain anonymous. I think after such a short period of time, particularly after 10 days since, since murdering Jerry, us knocking their door came as a hell of a shock to them. And, and I think that was evident from uh, their immediate reaction when we did knock their door in. Now the entire chapter of the Warwickshire Outlaws were in custody. But would they break the code of silence when put under intense police questioning? They simply responded either no comment, the words simply saying no comment, no comment, or said nothing at all, absolutely nothing to any, to any questions put to them. After 40 hours of constant questioning, six members of the gang remained silent. Where, where were you at... Uh... Yeah. One o'clock on that Sunday afternoon. No comment. And who are you with? No comment. How had you left the house that day? No comment. Although the gang members were exercising their right to silence, the police gave the suspects every opportunity to defend themselves. You had the hat on to disguise the tattoos on your head. No comment. What can you tell me about the death of Jared Tobin? No comment. The seventh one did speak. He, he accepted that, uh, that he was involved um, with the others in gathering intelligence, gathering information about Hell's Angels around the area of the Bulldog Bash site, and that he tried to tell us that that was a fairly innocent activity. Malcolm Bull had broken the number one rule of silence, and although his statement didn't give much away, he would now have to live with being labelled a grass. 13 days after Tobin's death, D.S. Lawrence had all the evidence he needed. We were able to satisfy the Crown Prosecution Service that there was sufficient um, for them to be charged. So all seven defendants were charged with murder.
On October the 2nd, the Warwickshire chapter of the Outlaws went on trial at Birmingham Crown Court. The city would be brought to a standstill as the Outlaws rode into town.